What's going on church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So I was meditating on the word of God and the Holy Spirit reminded me of two scriptures. The first one is Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The second verse is Matthew 10 verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. See, the reason why it's so important to fear God is because when you fear God, you're recognizing him to have all authority over your life and even over the enemy. Because sometimes what the devil will do, he will try to cause you to fear the stuff of this world. Therefore, causing us to step out of the presence of God. So when you fear God, that's giving the father all authority to not only rebuke the enemy, but also teach us how to walk on this narrow way that leads to life. Because the fear of the Lord is what keep us from living a lifestyle of sin. Or let's say we started off living in sin, right? And we just not very good people, but we want to change. The fear of the Lord is what causes that conversion to happen. When you're fully converted from a lifestyle of sin in order to live an obedient lifestyle that pleased the Heavenly Father, it starts with fearing the Lord thy God. And that's also what keep us from going back to old ways. See, sometimes the reason why we become stuck in a particular place in our lives, when it just feel like we can't overcome a particular sin or just got an addiction to certain stuff that we may watch on these devices and all that kind of stuff, it's because we haven't given God all authority over our lives. We continue to give the enemy that authority to keep us in that stuck place, to keep us in captivity. And we allow the enemy to play with our emotions. That's why the word also say, cast your care upon the Lord for he cares for you. See, sometimes when we're going through a difficult time in life, we use all these other devices, all this outside stuff that's tangible to occupy our time, to free our minds momentarily. And then the moment you try to take a break from it, all those mixed emotions come back stronger. They just flood in on you. And because we didn't give the authority to the Heavenly Father and we gave it to someone that doesn't even care about us, he uses all that stuff against us to make us feel even worse as a person. In 2 Timothy verse 1 through 7, it say, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now notice the words that's being said in this. He said, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So what we need to understand about fear is that it's a spirit. And the spirit of fear comes from the enemy. So that's why the beginning of wisdom is to fear thy Lord. Because how God showed me what fear is, is to give him all the authority, recognizing the heavenly father to be the supreme ruler over your life. Because the enemy wants to control your life with fear. But the Heavenly Father wants to liberate you so that you won't have to fear what's to come. Because God said, if you are a person that live in sin, you are a slave to sin. And the sin that God liberated us from through Lord Jesus, it also has an expected end. And that expected end is death. See, we don't have to worry about what man try to do toward us as long as we live in truth. Lord Jesus said, don't fear the one that can only destroy the body but not the soul, but fear the one who can destroy the body and soul. He can destroy both in hell. So it's all about respect at the end of the day. And because fear is a spirit, it's an intelligent form of something that can cause oppression in your life. We need the power of God. But if you never give God the rights to have all authority over your life, 
You can't rebuke the spirit of fear. See, Christ has all authority. He has all power. He has the sound mind that we need to function in this world. So by accepting him in our lives, that's how we gain the access to that authority so we can rebuke the spirit of fear because we can't do it alone. It's always going to be something that calls us to be fearful. But through Christ, we become bold, courageous, and we begin to learn how to walk with confidence on this path of righteousness. The reason why we should fear God is because he's our heavenly father. He's our parent. He's the one who take care of us. He's the one who make a way when it seemed like there's no way. For example, when you got good parents, right? And let's say you might be getting in trouble in school or just doing something that your parents wouldn't approve of and they find out about it. It's a little fear within you. Because you don't want them to find out. You must rather get away from the consequences that's to come if they find out. But when they find out, they chastise you. And they do this out of love because they don't want you to continue on that path. That way that leads to destruction. That way that leads you in a state of bondage. Shackles all on your, your, your wrists and your ankles and all this kind of stuff. And now they got to sit down and watch you destroy your life because you didn't listen, because you refuse instructions. See, that's a godly fear, a fear that will correct your path, a fear that will make the crooked path straight. God just want to make sure you understand he cares for you. He wants you to be liberated from all this chaos that the enemy tries to keep you in. So I want to end with this scripture. Romans 8 verse 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God brought us back to his family through Lord Jesus Christ. We're liberated from the spirit of fear, spirit of bondage, so that we may be set free by confessing our sins, crying, Abba, Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let us glorify the name of God. Let's put nothing before God. Let's make our God bigger than the problems we face. Because like I said, the enemy wants you to fear an outcome that probably won't even happen. But he wants you to focus on worldly stuff. And also focus on stuff that's out of our control. But God said, if you cast your cares upon him, he's going to help you get through the stuff that seem like there's no escape. God going to get you through it. But you got to believe. You got to have faith. You got to have love. True love in your heart. You got to respect God. You got to be obedient to his instructions. Because he said, if we be obedient and be sure to live in his word, he will make our way prosperous and we shall find good success. These are all words of encouragement from our heavenly father. And we are his children. The fear of the Lord is what remind us to stay on this path of righteousness. Because should you allow the enemy to take you off this path, to separate you out of the presence of God, then that person got to face the consequences that the Heavenly Father said sin will lead you to. But thank God we got a Heavenly Father that love us unconditionally. See, here's what it means to be loved unconditionally. Although you're messing up, although you're doing stuff that's not pleasing to the Heavenly Father, as long as you got breath in your body, he still got his arms wide open. You can come back to the Heavenly Father. You can repent from evil ways, turn a new leaf, start a new life, find new identity, be made new with a new mindset. That's what it means to be loved unconditionally. You might not always get it right, but God is always there waiting for you to return back to him. And we do this 
by confessing everything, having that godly fear in our hearts so that the Holy Spirit can remind us that we have a savior. That's Lord Jesus Christ. We can't work to be saved. We got to believe that we are saved because Lord Jesus said, when you believe on whom the father have sent, that's the ultimate work. Because that's letting the heavenly father know that what Lord Jesus did when he laid his life down, it wasn't in vain. Because we believe in the miraculous, wonderful works that the heavenly father did through Lord Jesus Christ. So understand this. It's all about instruction, obedience, and God is correcting your ways. He's teaching us how to live from within his kingdom. So that's why, you know, lately I've just been considering my ways. You know, it's still stuff I got to let go of. It's still habits that I got to overcome. But it's a beautiful thing because the word also say, he who began a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Christ. So let God continue to work on you. And he's going to help you overcome your struggles. Believe that. I pray this word bless you in Jesus name. Amen. I love y'all.